last year at mount abu we have a conference on science through silence in this conference we had a discussion on neutrino cimet is a material research laboratory and will play a role in the developing of the materials for the neutrino energy capture or conversion good morning everybody for this intrinsic webinar we have four eminent speakers dr vijay batkar dr holger dr rudvi and professor vasant boraskar so we are today talking about the harvesting of neutrinos for humanity as a whole for the world at large the cmet which is also working on batteries which are not electrical cars and uh, the materials for that and also on the storage issues if uh, cmet gets involved in this whole process i think that we can make a we can make a very uh, not only in detection and physics we can make a great contribution uh, for harnessing this technology and that's why we said uh, dr holger let's have this uh, interactions let us sign the mou let us collaborate together on this issue and uh, i'm sure with so many physicists so many material scientists so many people working uh, uh, from germany and under holger steep and of course from india i think uh, which is a uh, harnessing is a totally new subject for us i think in the thing how how do we do that and if we collaborate we have some early uh, we have some breakthroughs uh, on, on this and some people are very i think very far sighted they see this impact they see this impact this they see the opportunity they see the technology and that they are once the technology comes the whole breakthrough happens what has happened like 150 years back when electricity came and we see the whole world was lit up with light i think and then everything happened around this so we are seeing uh, what i was wanted to bring to to you to, to four or to which all of you know that this has a potential of that kind uh, this is a potential of that kind we are talking about it we are pioneering it in the sense that we are imagining um i was saying imagining that there will be tomorrow the cars tomorrow is not only mobiles but tomorrow's vehicles will be powered by this i'm very happy that uh, we are all come together for a collaboration for working this kind of thing and making initial breakthroughs and um, and you know once the once a breakthrough is made and uh, once i think uh the whole world can change talking about uh neutrino voltaic as a technology as a technology i'm not talking about the effects were known are known on so many years but looking at a commercially viable technology which can pervade the entire world humanity is a great i think great imagination and it can be done and uh, we are seeing some of the initial uh, realizations of that and i wish the entire team i think whole team for investigating this this breakthrough technology which will bring a new hope for the humanity today we are now discussing a very special issue for over 10 years i have been working on on it every day and it has taken a while to get to the mainstream today we have the recognition that we have access to the limited cosmic energy and that is exactly what humanity needs to continue and i want to say my very special thanks uh, to dr batkar to make uh, the thing so clear at the beginning because this is very important um we are talking not about a dream we talking about hard technical and physical facts and we are now called upon to use these findings and translate it into touchy technologies and this therefore it was very very important not to come in any conflict with the basic researchers for the neutrino research which are working with the detectors or working with the accelerators so that we make it very clear neutrino energy is not the neutrinos energy only so neutrino energy means the invisible spectrum of radiation which we want to use into for practical things I'm very very happy that we have this collaboration with cmet because i think we need 
the best knowledge and we need very awake and creative individuals which are using this knowledge and take this knowledge to change it, to really translate it into the touchy technologies because this is important for the people uh, that they can have something uh, in, inside their hands uh, for practical use. What I want to explain is that the global system of energy supply today is built on the idea of central production. So when, when we talk about neutrino voltaic, we have a different point of view. We are having only weak, weak force and weak energy. But as a, as a mathematician, I can tell you the sum of all this weak energy is much larger, much larger than all big power, all these big things around the world. This, and all this system as we have today, we doesn't want to speak badly because this system was born more than over hundred years ago. And it was useful at the moment in, in the time of early industrialization. But today, we come to the, I, I will use a hard word, to a abyss. We come to abyss. This is a question and the point of view, because today we see all the negative influence of, of them. The key to change something is the knowledge. And the knowledge comes, comes to me at around 2008. I, I was continuing the research of the photovoltaics and the one professor in Switzerland, he made particles smaller to have a larger surfaces to increase the power of the solar cells. But when he made it too small, he found vibrations and this vibrations were not useful for the photovoltaics. And there is a very nice study of a technical high school of Zurich. And this is a little bit one of the basics of this thing, what we are doing now in uh, neutrino voltaics is the atomic vibration in nanomaterials and nanocrystals. So this is an, these findings were very, very important especially the soft surfaces vibrate strongly and the soft surface, what we are using, this is graphene between two layers of silicium. The patent, what we have is the patent for a graphene sandwich. In the research, it was a very important point when the neutrino was not only was postulated, when the neutrino had a clear mass and because if something has a clear mass, it also will have energy. And today we have uh, um, that one single neutrino, we even know exactly that one single neutrino have something around one, one electron volt. This is just a very little amount of, of energy, but we have billions and we have it, not only, we, we doesn't only have the solar neutrinos, we have cosmic neutrinos and many other things. And as we have learned, we not only have the neutrinos, we have a lot of other things and electromagnetic radiation. We have now a quantum mechanical technology that we are able to convert the energy from the neutrinos and the other electromagnetic waves into electricity. And what we want to do within the next years to to implant this technology in any, really in any electrical device. And I tell you the, the story by the Pi car, because then you can imagine when, when, when you think about a car, you can imagine this car, this frame of the car can also be the cube at home or a little cube in any electrical device. 
in we see map we want to make this frame of the car in totally made of this material our neutrinos are too weak yes a single neutrino is weak but we have today a technology to convert the invisible spectrum of radiation into electrical power and i finally have a call to everybody who understand what I said today. Without any doubt, we know that we have enough invisible spectra of energy, not only enough, really a lot. Without any doubt, we know today how to convert a part of it into electrical power by quantum mechanical technologies in neutrino world tech. We know it. We know what we have to know to let it happen. And it's simply our duty to use that knowledge now to make life on this planet better. Not only for ourselves, we should do it for peace and we should do it for freedom. We should do it for our children and we should do it for the future generations. So thank you very much that you're listening to me and uh, hopefully I will have shortly the possibility to tell you more about that. So thank you very much. An important point for me to make as a expert in this field is that it is a very promising technology because they, they actually demonstrated it, that it works. Plus they uh, give a lot of uh, information on how it works. There is a paper from, uh, from China, from uh, a researcher called Wang. And he published on graphene neutrino mass and oscillations. So we just heard in the previous talk that the neutrinos oscillate between the three different types. So in a similar way, if you have different graphene layers, these graphene layers interact with each other, each, with each other in a very similar way or in the same way as the neutrinos oscillate. Holger also explained that this is part of the harnessing process. So the radiation, the neutrinos and, and other energies around, for example, ambient heat, most likely, they make the graphene oscillate and this oscillation can be converted into electron flow, meaning current. As I hope we in this whole research uh, will come, come further, is there's a lot of possibilities on the material side, on this uh, metamaterial side, like the doping, the combination exactly on how the graphene is treated and the silicon, as we know from semiconductors, is uh, also very important how you dope it. One thing I hope is that more foil comes out so we can make more um, experiments with them. On the scientific side, like I said, the materials are important and there's a big field on, on the materials, but also on the fundamental question, where does the energy exactly come from? usually is helpful in enhancing the effect if you know exactly what's going on. So here we also need more foil because on the efficiency side, if you can have more power, then it will be more easy to detect where is this power actually coming from. So what part of the radiation or ambient heat or neutrinos what is exactly giving out the power? If we have like a watt or two watts, then it's quite easy. You can, uh, you can use um, 
um, easy to build but sophisticated uh, calorimetry to see how much ambient heat is going in. You can see the radiation parts. You can exclude certain. I I think that um, this promising technology, if it if it is in many things, for example, a mobile phone. Obviously, as Professor Batka said, it's everybody will have one. Everyone will carry one around. So if it will be powered by a little neutrino foil module, then it will be a new age. I mean, it will be, everybody will know that this technology works, that if we have the neutrino foil, um, that will also become apparent that it might work differently for different people or in different environments, in different mental environments. Like in peace, it might give more energy than in a very harsh environment. And I know also that Holger is very much for applying these new technologies for peaceful applications. So yes, there is a subtle effect of thoughts on matter, but there's also a very gross effect on how we use things. And I think if we have access to new large amounts of energy, it's even more important than it is used that it will be used for peaceful applications and not for weapons and tanks and all of this. But, and that is also a question of consciousness among us that we create a peaceful environment and that peace emanates through everything and that we protect this nice new development that will be used for peaceful applications. Well, I would like to thank Dr. Bharat Kale, Director Simit, inviting me <clears throat> to give a talk on basic aspects of neutrinos.